from the contractor and the department and make a decision. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Thank you, Ms. Brown. You're recognized. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I wanted to ask uh, Ms. Uh, Holliday, um, it seems, you know, in this hearing, what were w w the uh, chair's um, uh, data points with regards to uh, projects and cost overruns and timeliness doesn't add up to VA's testimony r with regards to that, saying that, um, you know, such a large percentage is um, on time and on cost. Um, can you help me and the committee to understand um, the differences here and how we reconcile this? In most of our oversight, we have problems actually getting assurance that we have full costing through the, the projects. I, I think I'm on record as saying that there is a problem with not being able to track the full expenditures for the health care uh, systems, the seven um, that VA was trying to do. It, this is systemic. It goes across the department in the ability to really track all expenditures. So you definitely are going to have variables between you know, what was originally estimated and what the actual costs were. Um, Maureen Reagan, who handles our contract oversight, looks specifically at the Orlando Conference um, Medical Center and had found that almost 30 percent of the expenditures she looked at on change orders could not be validated or appeared inappropriate uh, charges and claims from the contractor. I, I think that that's something that happens in the normal course of business, but with good processes and tracking of expenditures, you can sort this out. Unfortunately, VA does not have those systems to really track expenditures on a per project basis and ensure it gets all of its expenditures accounted for. And does the Army Corps have a way to track costs? Uh, Ma'am, we, we do. Uh, and it, it's important to understand that, it, especially with medical facilities, you may have sources of funds which are from different appropriations that come together. So when Mr. Hagstrom talks about the cost of a facility, as I think of that, I'm, ta I'm thinking of what amount has been authorized by Congress for that project. There may be uh, other funds that are required for the initial outfitting of the uh, of the uh, contents of the of the facility as well, and that that so uh, when uh, when someone looks at a facility to try to sort out what the cost is, the question becomes which numbers are they looking at and for what purposes? I understand. I just think it's it's certainly frustrating from my perspective that um, what you're what, at least what the IG is saying is that there's really not a way within the VA to fully track. The, the costs of a project. And that seems to be fundamentally uh, problematic uh, to me, that the scope and size of the projects that we're trying to undertake here, the importance um, of these facilities to our veterans, and our inability really to be able to track these costs. I mean, it just seems it just seems uh, really honestly unbelievable to me in a way and and I, I think that it's something that we need to fully understand and I understand you know in large agencies and systemic problems I understand that but we've we must uh, address the issue and it, I think it must be fixed. I mean this is fundamental to any any uh, major construction project is that we should be able to uh, track the costs and our job partially is an oversight and if if it can't be done then I don't know how we'll ever get our arms around some of these issues. Thank you Mr. Chair. Thank you for yielding Ms. McLeod. You're recognized for three minutes. Thank you Mr. Chair. Uh, for Mr. 